Hello everyone, I hope you're having a blessed day. Um, welcome back to Math Help 101. Uh, today shouldn't be anything complicated or too extensive. We're just working with a pretty simple topic that's used quite abundantly in math. So let's get into it. Today's topic is the Pythagorean Theorem with right triangles, specifically right triangles. So we want to remember that. A right triangle is just this. A simple triangle, obviously three sides. But it has a right angle, or in other words, oops, 90 degree angle, 90 degree. Okay, so before we begin discussing the Pythagorean theorem, I think it's important to note the properties of a right triangle. So obviously we have a right angle right here, which is 90 degrees. And then we need to talk about these three sides of a triangle. So both of these two sides they are called legs and this one here is also a leg and then the third side this kind of like slope over here that travels from this vertices the top one to the bottom one is called the hypotenuse hypotenuse so now that we know that in terms of variables the f these two legs they're labeled as a b and then the hypotenuse is labeled as c so these are the most important factors of a right triangle and it's what we're going to need to know if we're going to use the pythagorean theorem to solve for the sides of these triangles okay so now that we know the properties of a right triangle and the way in which it could be associated with variables we can now solve for one specific part or side of a triangle through the use of the Pythagorean theorem. Now what this means is that in any instance or any case, you'll be given two sides of a right triangle and be asked to solve for the third one. And for this case, let's just use the two sides as our legs. So this one and this one, or in other words, A and B. Now let's say A is three units long and B is four units long. You'll be asked to solve for C which can be labeled as x or just left as c, and they'll tell you to solve for the hypotenuse. Now, how do we do this? We use the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is just a simple formula that states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So taking this into account, we know that a is 3. We know b is 4, but we don't know c, so we'll just leave that there. Let's take this down here. So, if we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then what we're saying is that in this case, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals our hypotenuse or c squared. Now, we just solve for this by figuring out what each factor is squared. So, 3 squared equals 9 plus 4 squared. 4 squared is 16 and that equals c squared. Now we add our factors, so 9 plus 16 equals 25. So 25 equals c squared. Now we don't fully have the answer yet because we're saying that c squared equals 25, but we're looking for just c. Now what do we do to solve this? We square root both sides, or we find the square root of 25 because we know well that a factor squared, you can remove that squared by square rooting it. That's really compl complicated and confusing, I'm sorry. But what I'm trying to say is that any factor to the second power, that exponent, which nobody really likes exponents, can be crossed out or removed by using square roots. Hopefully that makes more sense. So if we square root both sides, we're finding the square root of 25, which is 5, because 5 times 5 equals 25. And we've gotten rid of that second power in C. So 5 equals C or c equals 5. So we found out that if this side 3 and this side is 4, then that means this third side or hypotenuse must equal 5. Dude, that's because we use the Pythagorean Theorem, and that's why it's such a great formula, and it's so useful, even throughout all of middle school and high school, you'll be using it because it's so useful and so simple to do. Just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and that's what I want you to get out of this.
Now, applying what we already know, we can also solve for sides that are different from the hypotenuse, which in this case are the legs. Now, in some instances in math problems, you will get the units or measure of the hypotenuse and one leg, but you will be asked to solve for the other leg. So now, in this example, if this side is 5 and this side is 4 units long, then you're asked to solve for A or X. Now, how do we do this? We use the Pythagorean theorem, but we work like a little backwards. So using this formula, we know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, if you're asked to solve for a leg, then you don't know what one of the a squared or b squared is. And in this case, it's the a. So we don't know what a squared is, so we just put x squared. We know what b is, so plus b, so plus 4 squared equals c squared, which in this case is 5 squared. Now we just keep this x squared, and we solve for 4 squared and 5 squared. So plus 4 squared is 16 equals 5 squared, which is 25, because 5 times 5 equals 25. Now we just use our inverse operations to subtract 16 and subtract 16 from the other side, where we have x squared equals 9. So we've worked backwards, and now we're in the same position as we were before. We don't know where x, but we have 9. So how do we do this? We just square root the x squared to get rid of this exponent at the top, and we square root 9. Because once you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side, meaning x equals square root of 9, or in this case, 3, because 3 times 3 equals 9. So, x equals 3, or a equals 3 units long. Thank you guys so much for watching this short but informationally filled video. I really appreciate all of you guys. I know we've had such an immense subscriber jump as of now, and again, super grateful for that. I really appreciate all of you. I just ask that more people can like and subscribe so that we can make this channel even more accessible to everyone and anyone in a situation that's not as beneficial um, as others have or other or others experience in math. I know this is such a hard concept, but I feel that when I can just bring it to everyone's level and just explain it at, at, in everyone's terms, I feel like we can all improve in the most beneficial way. And again, I know you guys don't have to watch these videos, but I'm just so grateful that you do and that you're you're interested in math, that you want to learn more, and in that case, you watch my videos. I'm so grateful. Thank you, guys. God bless. Have a good one.